So now we're continuing the discussion of impedance uh, measurements of piezoelectric materials. And now I'm going to describe the different uh, simple geometries we use to determine the material properties. So in this figure, I'm showing a K31 mode. And what K31 refers to is that this is the this is the first uh, sort of the coupling factor but it's it, this using the word k31 it sort of describes these last two numbers really describe what the resonance mode of the system is well what is it it's applying a field in the three direction and getting vibration in the one direction so the three direction is always classically uh the polarization direction and here we're finding vibration in the one direction. And this is due to uh, the geometry. Different geometries uh, have different resonance frequencies. So for example, the uh, so different resonance frequencies have different uh, related geometries. So this length direction is the longest direction. And therefore, it will have the lowest resonance frequency. And because uh, it's you know it's the longest, it'll have the largest response. So it's best to measure the material properties along the one direction. In this case, we'll be measuring the S11 along the length direction because we're sort of isolating it and allowing it to have the large response. Because it's the K31 mode, we're applying the electric field in three direction. We're going to be measuring the D31. However, at low um uh you know uh, frequency such as one one kilohertz if you measure the capacitance at one kilohertz which is <coughs> hopefully far away from the resonance frequency uh probably gonna it's gonna be uh, we'll be measuring the permittivity in the three three direction because actually what's happening is that we're met we're applying electric field in the three direction and we're also getting charge on the three in, in a polarization developed in the three direction therefore the permittivity measured will be that of the electric field applied in the three direction and the resultant polarization in the three direction and this x here it means uh this capital x it means constant stress so we're not constraining it you, you can also say et which is perhaps a little more uh, common. Uh, this also can represent uh, the permittivity uh, without constraining the material. This is the K33 mode. In this mode, the polarization, again to mention, is in the three direction, and the vibration is in the three direction. And K refers to the coupling factor, but <coughs> this whole word you know saying k33 is sort of sort of standard uh to refer to a certain mode k33 k31 k15 um so here the length is also the thickness because we have uh, polarized this material in the length direction or length is thickness so the important thing to note about this material is that the vibration is always in the three direction the largest response will be then it will be in the three direction because the geometry and the resonance frequency uh, would be dominated by this effect. Uh, but a very interesting point in, in discussion about the K31 and the K33 mode. Let's draw out our little our favorite K33 mode sample. Okay. And I'm going to allow you to use your imagination. Okay, that's the electrode, yellow electrode. This is gold, we're rich. So we're going to use a gold electrode. Here, anyways, we know we have a polarization in the three direction. Uh, and we're going to have vibration in this direction, in the one direction. When the material is vibrating, in this resonance mode, what does the electric field in the material look like? So if you take a look, I take a big side view chunk of this material. And then we're going to take a smaller piece of it now. And at this, at this instant in time, we're going to assume this piece of material is going that way. And it's, it's undergoing some certain, let's say, positive type of strain. So let's say the so let's say a uh, at at a certain given point in time, uh, the displacement 
uh, mode shape is going to be a half wavelength. So from the middle, the at resonance frequency, we're going to have a mode shape looking like this. So this is displacement, longitudinal displacement in this direction. So for for example, for this position right here, it's going to be it's going to move out that far to this this degree, and this is the position we'll call x1. The position we'll be calling x1. <coughs> so x1 is the length is the position coordinate. So the strain of that will then determine um, the resultant charge because we have this, you know, the strain equals dE. We could sort of back calculate then the electric field. So what would be sort of the uh, charge produced on the material uh, due to a strain? So if we integrate the displacement, we get the strain. It's going to look like that. And now what happens when you strain this material? When you strain this material, because it's a D31, because it works according to the D31 coefficient, the charges then would appear on the top and bottom. So you strain this material, you produce some type of strain, and strain I'm writing as a cursive X. Okay, strain is a cursive X. So you strain this material, and because you strain it, you develop charges on the top and bottom. However, the top and bottom electrodes, they're connected to a power source. So I'm now telling you that because the top and bottom are connected to a power source, the power source is forcing the voltage on those electrodes to be at a certain value. So therefore, you're controlling the voltage. Because you are controlling the voltage, the compliance you'll be getting in the material <coughs> will be S11 under constant electric field because you are not allowing electric field or you're not allowing charge to develop and accumulate on the surface as a result of vibration. I'll say that again. The compliance in the K31 mode is the uh, compliance in the 1 1 direction because vibration is occurring in the 1 1 direction. Uh, effectively, the D31 coefficient is converting electric field. I'll write this down. The D, so we have electric field in the three direction. We go through the D31 coefficient, and then we get stress in the one direction. Well, D31, yeah, something like <coughs> which results in strain in the one direction. So sort of, we, we have a strain applied and a stress applied in the one direction here. And it's under electric field because the strain developed in the one direction due to an electric field in the three direction will cause charges in the three direction. Sorry, the, the movement. So because of those charges are developed on the, on the surface, which are externally controlled, we will get this S11E. E meaning, uh, <coughs> my voice is sort of yeah, here and there. Uh, e is a constant electric field. We normally think about it as like short circuit, but it's not exactly short circuit. It's just saying that the electric field is controlled. Char is not allowed to accumulate. So how about the K33 mode? What's so special about that? How is this any different? You know, we're applying electric field in three direction, getting vibration in three direction. Uh, one would think that... Um, you would see results according to the S33, right? Because you're applying in the three direction, and you expect the E, right? Electric field. No, this is wrong. And for the K31 resonator, the resonance frequency, FR, corresponds to S11E, for the reasons I just mentioned. However, the resonance frequency for the S for the K33 resonator does not refer to the S33E. Okay, for the K33, this is not true. However, how do we explain this, and how exactly then do we actually measure compliance? This is my uh, goal to tell you. So, if we we have in this system, again, we have a resonator who has electrodes on the flat surface on the front surface uh, you know you can be imagine it looks like this right and um, what happens here again well at resonance frequency since it's a longitudinal resonator at the resonance frequency 
it should have a let's erase this sorry at the resonance frequency is going to have a uh, so half sinusoidal uh, displacement and this is I'm not talking about resonance frequency of the piezoelectric material I'm just talking about in general if you have a material looking like this a block of wood a block of steel uh, the resonance frequency for a longitudinal direction is going to be a half sinusoid and the strain is going to be then it's going to be for at instant, any instance in time it's going to be a cosine so again, this is the displacement, this is the strain, this is x3 now, because we're talking about that 3 coordinate. See, what happens in this case is we have a, <coughs> a strain distribution <coughs> over the material. If we have a material in the DC case, and we stretch it, for example, we take this material and we stretch it, there's going to be a constant strain in the material therefore uh, the uh, therefore you know obviously when you strain the, when you pull on the material let's say this is applied by a pulling force when you pull on the material you're going to get charges developing and because the stress and strain in the material is uniform uh, charges will develop uniformly So, let's, again, we're talking about the uniform case. So, this would be the strain distribution. You just pull down the material, you have, a, you have a, a, a certain positive strain because you apply a stress. So, the charge distribution then over the material, let's call that little q, because when you apply a stress, you know, to a piezoelectric material, you get a polarization. So, then the polarization results because of charges developing on the surface. So, you get a certain charge also proportional to how much you pulled uh, <coughs> on the material <coughs> for a k3 uh, 1 resonator these charges would appear on a k3 1 resonator these charges would appear on the top and bottom but you're connecting that to an external source however for the k3 3 resonator your electrodes are going to be on the sides so therefore when you hook up your uh, your 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 power source to the size of the material uh, you're not going to be able to drain this charge see when you are when you were hooked up to a power source in the d31 mode the charges appear on the top and bottom of the material you could drain the charge uh, according to the voltage applied or drain or put more charge according to the voltage applied but here in this case because strain is developing internally in the material and there's no way for this charge to get to these electrodes <coughs> we have a distribution of electric field see the the initial application in electric field allows for a stress a alternating stress in the material to develop this alternating stress in the material causes charges and these charges cannot be moved to the electrodes and because uh, in the k33 resonator vibration causes charge which is not directly uh, uh, controlled by the applied field on the ends of the material because the, uh, the charges are not controlled by the applied field directly there there uh, it causes a another internal electric field in the system essentially the fact that the K33 resonator causes extra charge to develop in the material which can't be drained off. This is why the resonance or sort of mechanical resonance of the material corresponding to the half wavelength is actually S33 at constant dielectric displacement. Because in this case, charge is developing. As I mentioned, when you're pulling on the material <coughs> and you are not touching touching the charge you are not controlling the charge at all then you have a d constant so in this case it is as if we are not touching the charge at all and this is related to a uh the uh, a mechanical resonance of this system but this act doesn't correspond to the electrical resonance uh it can it corresponds to the mechanical resonance so what do we mean by mechanical resonance and electrical resonance uh, 
we'll save that for another time. But just know that charge is caused and, and developed internally in the K33 resonator. Uh, therefore, its treatment is according to SD.